Hi, I'm John from a &E Construction and today I'm going to be talking you through British Gypsum's repair range including how to patch using Bonding 60 and then finishing using Easy Fill 20 and Thistle Multi Finish. So let's take a closer look at the materials. This is Bonding 60 and as the name suggests it is dry in 60 minutes and ready to be finished in approximately 75 minutes. It's ideal for medium to low suction backgrounds and is less prone to shrinkage and cracking. It comes in a variety of different sizes, a 10 kilo tub, a 12 and a half kilo bag, and a 25 kilo bag. This is Easy Fill 20. It is a combined setting and air drying gypsum based material, which comes in five kilo or 10 kilo bags, and is ideal for fine finishing over areas such as Bond and 60. This is Thistle or Multi Finish. It's a gypsum based finished plaster, which is ideal for use on internal walls and ceilings and provides a smooth and durable base for decorative finishes. Here is a selection of tools that you may need to apply these products. Now I've got everything together, let's go and get it mixed up. Okay, I'm about to start mixing my Bonding 60. Before I did this, I made sure the area that I was going to plaster was prepped and ready. I made sure it was just free, I gave everything a nice hoover down and then I've given it all a coat of Gyp Prime. If you're going to use Gyp Prime for your surface, make sure that you check the tub for the manufacturer's recommendations before you do. Before you mix up the plaster, if you have bulk bought it, make sure you use the older stuff first. Just check the date on the bag and then you will know when it's safe to use. Also, check the back of the bag for the manufacturer's recommendations on how to mix it, how much water to add and setting times as well. Right. Let's get it mixed. Once all the lumps are gone, stop mixing straight away because over mixing can affect the setting times. Also, it's worth noting, clean your tools off straight away as well because if you've got a big bucket of this to use, the last thing you want to do is be worrying about if this is going off on your whisk. Right, let's go and get it on the wall. It's important to note that when you're applying bonding coat 60, it should only be installed at 11 mil thickness. If it is any greater than that, you need to build it up in layers of 8mm. You can see here that I've got a few patches which were quite deep, so I've had to build this up in multiple layers to allow for my final pass of 8mm. I've also done the same up there on the next patch that I'm going to do. So, let's get on. It's always worth just feeding it into the edges first, then put a little bit extra on your trowel and run it straight up just to make sure the whole area is filled in nicely and it keys in well to the side of the chase. Take any excess off the edges because you don't want this to be proud of the existing plaster. So we've got a socket here. This is dead. I've turned it off at the fuse board. Obviously wet plaster and electric does not mix. So make sure safety first, disconnect any sockets. I've just put a bag over it just to protect the face plate as well. When you're applying the bonding, don't just go and whack a load in like that. It might be necessary just to put in small amounts at a time and just work it into the areas that you need it to go into. You can see where it's curled up here. Just get a little bit like that, squeeze it in, and then just run your trowel up it. You obviously can't get your trowel underneath there, so things like a margin trowel or a small tool, they work well just to get in little areas like that. Also make sure that you're filling the hole completely with the product. You don't just want a little layer on top. Just squeeze it right in and go over it again just to make sure it's pushed right in. Any excess that goes into the socket or anything like that, you can just soon scrape that off afterwards. Right, easy as that. I've got plenty more chases to get on with, so I'm gonna do that because with Bonding 60, you have 45 minutes of workability time. Also, after 60 minutes, as the name suggests, it has gone off, and then after 75 minutes, it's ready to finish. So, I'm gonna get on with the rest of my chases. Right, so my Bonding 60 has had around 75 minutes now, probably a little bit longer, just to make sure it has gone off nice and hard and is now ready to receive our finish. Before we get our finish mixed up, what I'm gonna do is just run over my chases, just with a scraper and just give the edges a light scrape just to make sure that any excess bits that are left are gone because we don't want these interfering with our finish. 
So just the light's great, nothing too serious. Just make sure there's no high spots anywhere and that will make your job a lot easier when you come to finish. It's also a good idea at this stage to clear out any electrical boxes that you may be patching around. It just makes it a lot easier in the end when you come in to get a nice finish and get a nice square box. And also the electricians will thank you for it because the last thing they want is their electrical boxes full of plaster. Now just get yourself a dry brush, brush it all down, make sure you get rid of any dust and then get your finish mixed up. So my Easy Fill 20 is mixed to a nice smooth creamy consistency. You don't want it too wet, you don't want it too thick. One thing you do need to know is straight away clean off your whisk and any other tools that you've used to mix up because as the name suggests in 20 minutes this stuff has gone off. So let's get this cleaned off and go and get it on the chasers. Easy Fill 20 can be applied using a hawk and trowel or a tape and jointing knife such as this or a scraper, whatever you see fit to use. Easy Fill 20 is a sandable material so you don't need to make sure it's perfectly smooth from the outset because you can sand it down. It can also be applied in multiple coats as well so in areas like this where the backing isn't actually perfectly flat you can wait for it to dry and then apply another coat after and then wait for that to dry and then sand it down. So that is my first coat on. All I need to do now is leave that for 20 minutes and then I can come back and reapply a second coat. Now my first coat has had enough time to go off. All I'm gonna do is just flick over with the scraper just to take off any high spots or any areas where it's bulged like this in my socket. And then I can go straight on with my second coat. That's it, easy as that. So it's nice and flat now, ready to receive the second coat. All that needs to be done now is to leave that overnight to cure fully and then it can be primed and receive a painted finish. As soon as the lumps are gone from your mix, stop mixing straight away because over mixing can affect the setting times. As always, once you finish mixing, give your tools a good clean off and then go and get your chasers covered. Even though we're doing chasers, multi-finish is still a two coat system, so it will need two coats applying to it. So I'm gonna put a nice thin coat on now Leave that to dry enough to take the second coat and then get that on. So let's get the first coat on. When you're applying the first coat, make sure you haven't got any big lumps anywhere and try and keep your edges as tight as possible. That's it, the first coat is on. Like I've mentioned, keep your edges nice and tight because the last thing you wanna be doing is fighting against the edges of the plaster when you come to flatten off. So I'm gonna leave this to pull in enough now ready for a flatten. The first coat has been given enough time to pull in and before I apply my second coat, I'm just gonna get these edges down using a brush and my trowel. All that I'm doing now is literally just squeezing this out just to get it as flat as possible before I apply the second coat. Right, so I've mixed up some fresh material and I'm now going to apply my second coat. Same as before, you want to keep your edges nice and tight as possible so as not to cause any ridges and so you can get a nice smooth blend. That's it, easy as that. The second coat is on, I'm just going to leave that now to dry off a little bit more and then we will come back and flatten again. It's nice and flat now, I'm just going to leave that to dry up enough so it can receive the final trial. It has been given enough time now to pull in fully and now I'm going to give it the final trial. All that needs to be done now is to leave this to fully dry before decoration. And easy as that, that is how you install British Gypsum's repair range. If you would like any further technical information, please be sure to visit British Gypsum's website. I'm John from a Construction. See you next time.